Good morning. Would you please join me in the call to worship? How very good and pleasant it is when families live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down the beard of Aaron. It is like the dew of Hermon, which fails on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained the blessing upon us, life forevermore. And our opening prayer. We broadcast your glorious deeds, O God, and spread abroad the good news of the gospel. You have not forsaken your people, but promise your presence through the gift of your spirit. In Christ, you redeem us from the past that enslaves us and free us for a future life lived in your love. Hear us now as we sing your praises and fill us with wisdom as we learn of your way. Amen. Lord, listen to you, children. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 10 through 20. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. Then his disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders, leading the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall in a ditch. Then Peter answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things that defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
morning, kids. I hope everyone knows what this is. Yes, it's a $20 bill. And I'll bet each and every one of you would like to have this in your pocket to spend when you want. But how about now? Do you still want it? It's all crumbled up. Do you think it's still worth $20? Yes, it's still worth $20. This crumpled up $20 bill is like our sins. God created us in his image, but sin caused us to be damaged. And God's image of us became distorted. We become crumbled like this money, although sin made us no longer look like God and caused us to be separated from God. It never changed our worth or value to him. In Romans 5 verse 8, it says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Have you ever found money on the street? I actually found this dirty, dingy penny in the parking lot. And it was probably even run over. But, as we all know, it's still worth one cent. God doesn't throw us away because we are no longer perfect like him. We matter so much to him that he sent his son to die for us, for our sins. So if you think you've messed up pretty bad, that you think God will never forgive you, remember this crumpled up $20 bill. It didn't lose its value or worth, and neither will you to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, please watch over these children this week. Help them to remember that they are worthy of God's love, no matter how crumpled they get. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our background scripture for today is taken from the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 10. This is one of the lectionary readings for this week, and I felt drawn to this particular text. Hear now the words that are recorded when he called the multitude to himself. He said to them, Hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth defiles a man. Then the disciples then said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying, and every plant which my heavenly Father had planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. Let the blind leaders lead the blind, and if the blind leads the blind, both will fall in the ditch. And Peter answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, Are you still without understanding? 
Do you yet understand whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? Those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed of evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornications, theft, false witnesses, blasphemings. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with and wash hands does not defile a man. These are the words that form the basis of our message today. And I want to share with you from the subject, what is in you will come out. What is in you will come out. Let's pray. God, we do thank you again for another opportunity and privilege to be gathered around your word. We thank you that it is your word that brings life and hope and help. It is your word that where we understand you better and see you clear. And so to God, speak to us today from your word. God, consecrate me now to thy spirit, Lord, with thy power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. God, draw me near, near, God, to thee, to the cross where thou hast died. God, draw me near, near, God, to thee, to thy precious bleeding side. And even again, God, give me the gift of preaching. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Much attention has been given to the outward appearance of individuals. We go through a lot of trouble each day to make sure that our outward appearance is intact. When we got up this morning and got ready for the day, we went through a series of chains of events just to get ready to be presentable. You probably took a shower, washed your hair, dried your hair, styled your hair, put on your makeup and clothes, got your clothes ready, put on your clothes, looked in the mirror and made sure that your clothes were correct and that everything was ready for your public presentation. Being ready to meet the public in whatever form that that public appearance will take place. As we should. We should be mindful how we look. How we look on the outside is the first thing that people see and tells a story about us. Steve Jobs, who is one of the founders of the Apple and iPhone and iMac and Mac computer uh, products, is known for wearing his same color black turtleneck every day for years, and it has become his signature look. Though he was a genius in computers, he was a, an ultimate failure in his wardrobe and attire. I also once read a story about Beethoven, a great musician, a composer. I must admit that he is a very interesting character. One thing about his story, however, is when he would eat his meals, when he sat down for a meal. And while he was eating, he would always drip some of his food onto his necktie. If he was having soup, he'd drizzle uh, soup down his necktie. If he was, whatever was part of his meal, some portion of it would end up on his necktie. He would, but he would rewear this necktie over and over again without cleaning it. As a result, his necktie had a history of meal, meal, meals. And you could know what his history of, of consumption was by just looking at his tie. Imagine it was a very dirty, unclean uh, presentation. And so though he was a genius and made great contributions to music, he failed in his public appearance. Have you ever seen a picture of him? His hair was always awry. In our, in our text, the spirit of uh, Phaseric, Judaism intended these external rituals to keep the inward heart focused on the heart of the Torah, mindful of one's duties to God and neighbor while immersed in the details of daily life. Jesus knew that even the best intentions, internal observances can become corrupted. They can become substitutes for devotion to God while our hearts are occupied with thoughts that promote our agendas and may be contrary to God's agenda for us. Because after all, it's not about us. It's all about God. Matthew 5, 8, which is not part of our text, uh, tells us it is impossible to honor God, God with our lips while our hearts are far removed. Our mouths are built to praise God, 
In other words, what comes out of our hearts, the words that um, come out of our heart, or it really intended our mouths are built to praise God. So Psalms 19 and 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. At the heart of the scripture passage lies a proverb. Not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out. Jesus often coined short sayings or proverbs that shed light on specific situations. Here Jesus provides a short story the Pharisees criticizing his disciples for not following ritual pre-meal hand washing, implied as a broader criticism on their part against Jesus and his disciples for not observing the rules for which one could and could not do on the Sabbath for and for associating themselves with those who were viewed unclean. Here the Pharisees intended to keep their external rituals. They gave a lot of attention and emphasis on the outward expression. The Pharisaic Judaism intend, intended these extreme rituals to keep the inward heart focused on the heart of the Torah or the Old Testament mindfulness of one's duty to God and neighbor while immersed in the details of daily life. They can become substitutes, however, for devotion to God while our hearts are occupied with thoughts that promote our agendas that may be contrary to God's agendas for us. This, say, this saying of Jesus about what defiles is a paradoxical proverb meant to undercut the way we habitually look at things. Now, convention wisdom, whether biblical or contemporary, usually pairs good behavior with good results. A penny saved is a penny earned. Conventional wisdom also usually pairs foolish behavior with ruinous results, as in the contemporary proverb coined by my computer operators. Garbage in, garbage out. Though this is not a biblical expression, it gives a, a clear indication of what's in you will come out. In Matthew's our text, 15, verses 10 through 20. Jesus taught the crowds, including the Pharisees and the disciples, that a person is not defied by what he puts in his stomach, but, what, but by which originates in the heart and is manifested in his life. For example, murders, adultery, fornication, theft, and deception. The preceding narrative implies that one's race, ethnicity, gender and disability or class does not defile a person. Jesus was more concerned about the inward quality. Proverbs 4.23 says, keep your heart, keep your and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard for out of it flows the springs or the issues of life. Not what goes in the mouth that makes him unclean and defiled, but what comes out of his mouth, what proceeds out of his heart. When this is what makes a man unclean or defiled. Now the word foul, defiled comes from a Greek word that is kanoa, K-O-I-N-O-O, kanoa. In Greek meaning, it, makes, it means to make or consider profane, called common defile, pollute, or unclean. In David's prayer of repentance for his sins with Bathsheba, he cried out to God to change him from within. In verse 7 and in verse 10, we hear words that give us an indication of what it is that David wanted the Lord to do for him. He says in verse number seven, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Verse number 10 says, and create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 
In Psalms 51, David traces his backsliding to his outward rituals and of lack of inward sincerity. He realizes that God desires truth in the inner, inner part, truth in his heart and not just lip service. God is always trying to make us better. Through our, though our outward appearance is important, the inside of us is more important because it's what in it, what's in us that will come out. Our hearts must be pure towards God because it's what's in us. It's what, in, what is in our heart is that is which is going to eventually come out. Are we so blind by our church buildings and rituals that we don't see God and we don't see what really matters? What matters to God is what is in the inward parts, that we be made more into the image of God. What matters to God is the inward parts that we are to be made better, not, not necessary from without, but from within, because within us will eventually find a way to come out. What matters to God is that the inward part reflects the image of God. And when the inside reflects the image of God, what will come out is the image of God. What is in, in us will come out in various ways. It will come out in our conversation. It will come out in what we say. It will come out in what we do. It will come out in our action. What is in us will eventually come out. And sometime I've been around long enough to know that sometime it comes out when we don't want it to come out. Sometimes things spill out of our mouth that we didn't want to come out. But those things that spilled out of our mouth expose the condition of our hearts. The book of James describes the human tongue. James chapter 3, verse number 5 through 8 says, Even the tongue is a little member. And boast of great things. See how great a force a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire and a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. It is set on fire and by and fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird and reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed, but no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly and evil and full of poison. Most of us have been to the doctor. And in most of our doctor's appointment, one of the things that the doctor stresses is our diet. What we eat, how we eat, how much of what we eat. They tell us to stay away from salt and sugar and carbs. And the list seems to go on in every doctor appointment. Some have some of us have adjusted our diets. Some of us still have to have work that is done. It's always good to adjust our diets. But if we're going to please God, not only must we care about our physical, but we must care and make some adjustments to our internal. This message today doesn't emphasize the physical health, but rather the spiritual health, the condition of our heart, the inward part, the area in which concerns Jesus. As we read our text, it's obvious that the scribes and the Pharisees were more concerned with the disciples' hands than they were with their hearts. This scripture supports the Lord's position. For when God was selected a man to replace Israel's first king, and in 1 Samuel uh, 16, chapter 16, verse number 7, it says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his outward countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks in the heart. When he called the multitude together in our text, he said to them, Hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth defiles the man, but what comes out of the mouth defiles the man. Church, we always have work to be done. There's always work that we need to do on us. But what is in us will eventually come out. We must continue, continuously and constantly be at work, shedding off of the old and taking on the new. We must continuously shedding out of the old nature and embracing the new. The work is continuous. It's called the sanctification process, the process of where we're, the old person is being put away and the new, pers new person is coming to the forefront. We must, can study, we must continue to study God's word. 
And when we study God's word, not just be readers of the word, but when we, we must apply the principles of God's word. When we apply those principles of God's word, we are being changed from within. The process of growing in our faith is shedding off of the old and taking off of the new character in Christ Jesus. This is the work that we must be about continuously being made and molded and shaped into the very image of God. We don't work on our insides if we don't do the work. If we don't put in the labor and the time that we can be shaped into God's image, shedding off of the old and taking on the new. If we do not do this work, what is in us will come out. And if we don't do this work, what's in us will come out. We won't like it. So as people of God, let us always be mindful of growing in our faith, walking in God's word, shedding off of the old and taking on of the new, being molded and made it more into the image of Christ. We have work to do. And let us be about the work of God. Let us be about changing from the inside, allowing God to work on us from the inside, allowing God to shape us from the inside, allowing God to make us from the inside, allowing God to mold us from the inside, allowing God to make us into the very image of Jesus. But when we, our insides reflect the image of God, then what comes out is the image of God. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.